have you ever seen a macadamia nut tree in flower? Well, now you have. Let's take a little tour of my macadamia nut trees. This thing is just loaded, loaded full of flowers. The flowers are really, really pretty flowers. I'll pull a few off, show you how they work. There's like hundreds of little flowers in here. They're a very delicate, soft pink, and they are actually pleasantly fragrant, and, uh, and they're just gorgeous. Now, the macadamia nut tree is not native to Hawaii. Lots of plants have been popularized in other places than from which they are native to. And one of them is the macadamia nut tree. You might know the pineapple is uh, Hawaiian, right? No, it's not. It's from, it's from South America. Coffee is uh, from where? Like Colombia, right? Wrong. It's from Ethiopia, Africa. What else? Um, how about kiwis? They're, uh, they're native uh, from Australia, right? New, New Zealand, that's what's famous for kiwis. <laughs> they call them kiwis down there, right? Australia, uh, New Zealand's, but they're not. They are from Asia. So you never know where all this stuff is from. Bananas, Central America, right? The banana republics, wrong. Asia, so citrus, California, oranges, right? No, Asia. So anyway, you never know where the stuff's from. This plant is actually not native to Hawaii. It is native to Australia. So there you go. Australia, as you may know, is a fairly dry place and uh, it produces a lot of really interesting dry land plants that are adapted to dry conditions. Um, you know, we have this macadamia nut out here. This one has lots of flowers. Let me show you one that's actually more beautiful over here. I don't, I haven't watered these trees I haven't done anything to these trees. Um, I just planted them, watered them for a little while. The water system hasn't even worked out here in years. So I know they're getting nothing other than rainfall. But look at how beautiful this tree is. It's evergreen, it's probably 20 feet tall, 20 feet wide, and uh, really dark, rich green, no fertilizer, complete, absolute permaculture on this tree. Now, I had a theory I love macadamia nuts. Love to eat them. Love them to have uh, chocolate chips with them. I love them in ice cream. I love everything about them. Beer and, and macadamia nuts, greatest thing ever. You go to Hawaii, sit at the bar, they give you free macadamia nuts. It's like heaven on earth, right? Well, but when you come back to California, you try to go buy macadamia nuts, and it's like 10 bucks for like eight nuts. Well, I can't afford that kind of lifestyle. So what do you do? I had the same idea with my avocados. Right? Boom, boom. Avocados. Cost a bunch of money. Well, plant a bunch of avocado trees. And guess what? I get a ton of avocados off my avocado trees, even with abusive growing practices such as I practice here <laughs> with a very little water. And, uh, you know, I just let them go. And so, uh, anyway, I thought I'd save a bunch of money, just like with avocados, planting my macadamia nuts, having an endless macadamia nut supply. Well, let me tell you, that didn't actually work out so well. And I'll tell you why. Even though these trees are beautiful, they grow here, they look fantastic, they're drought tolerant, you can't kill them, and they're deer tolerant. Look, the deer don't touch these leaves. Look, here's the brand new leaf. It's nice and soft and beautiful green. It's a new flush out that's so pretty, and it's multicolored against last year's growth right here. Darker green and leathery. Here, hear that? It's like leather. Well, the deer don't touch these plants. They, they, they're fully within deer range. Look at what they do with my avocados. Do you see any avocado leaves hanging down where a deer could eat them? No, because look at this tree. I, I gotta cage these trees to get them started. Then once they get bigger, I let them grow out, take the cage away, deer eat them. Well, they're like nibbling right through here. They're reaching in there and eating the leaves. But. Uh, that doesn't happen to the macadamia nut tree. So it's got all these wonderful qualities, except for making fruit. Well, they make a bunch of fruit, but here's the problem. The fruit is smaller, maybe because I don't water and fertilize, maybe that would make a difference. But you'd think the tree is so healthy looking, you'd think it would make you know nice big fruit. Um, it doesn't, it makes smaller fruit. And the fruit that it makes, it has this really, really hard shell. So you gotta like bust the thing with a hammer. Sometimes you lose the seed inside. 
sometimes you obliterate it. And, um, and the other problem with these guys is the, uh, the, uh, the squirrels come and eat like every single one of these nuts. It's killing me. And so, you know, I've gotten macadamia nuts off these trees. They've been pretty good, but they're nothing like the roasted, salted, giant, Mauna Loa brand nuts from Hawaii. I've never been able to duplicate that process. And so, you know, I don't, I only recommend uh, at my nursery stuff that I myself would want after I've tested it. I mean, avocados are awesome. I mean, you know, even if you abuse them and they're a little smaller, so what? You, you just eat them anyway, right? Well, the macadamia nuts, they're just kind of a hassle. It's a beautiful tree, but it's not one that I am going to recommend for you guys to come down to my nursery and buy. Unless you really want to, you know, maybe if you fertilize them a ton, water them a ton, you might get some uh, really good quality fruit, get a special nutcracker, and you get, <laughs> you get some assassin to get the squirrels or I don't know. So you gotta deal with squirrels somehow, or maybe there's no squirrels at your house. So that's my experience, and uh, there you go. It's it's uh, uh, Macadamia tetraphylla, I believe is the botanical name, and I have uh, I believe this is Beaumont variety, and that's what I'm sticking to.